say my name's John Johnson, I'm part of the, the small museum team that what used to be known as the local authority museums up there in Angus, uh, we are called Angus Alive uh, uh, Sport and Leisure Trust and we, we operate to manage for the County of Angus to look after the historic museum collections that we have of Angus Council. Uh, now as I say I'm part of a small team in the museums, it's a very small team in the museums but as it's the first Saturday in November I'm getting to wear my archaeology hat. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a rare thing for me and it's, it's great. So thanks for, for inviting me here. I should like to thank the committee for inviting me here today to talk about some of the smaller casual finds that come in with little like trims and drabs into the museum, so the big uh, sets. And we're conscious of some of these arriving. I think we should perhaps revisit them uh, today. I'll... Ah, yes. Just to say, we're coming from Angus across the Great Divide, across the south of the today, but Brecon and so is carrying your for the uh, museum services that we run. I'll just give a quick check on museums. Montrose Museum, up at the top end, going back, Arthur's Museum, 1841, uh, one of the oldest buildings, museum buildings in Scotland. Fantastic collection, if you haven't been, must go. And I'll just give a check of one of the two others, Method Museum. In Forfar, uh, the enthusiasts amongst us uh, for the Pictish relics will know the method as a home for a, a splendid collection of enigmatic Pictish stones. You can visit the Signal Tower Museum in Arbroath, uh, reflecting the, the Bell Rock, uh, history of Bell Rock Lighthouse, and visit this week. Oops. The Kirinir Museum, uh, home of Barry. Fame. Our museums are full of activities, from archaeology to everything, just to say we're a vigorous museum service and we're trying to uh, make our way in, in this time. One last quick check for our museums is the Methan Museum Forfar. Um, if you go to Methan Museum this week, you'll start to see uh, art objects or great winter exhibition that is coming to, to show. And uh, I do encourage everyone to cross the tape and go and go opposite. Method. Now, I was very struck over what uh, Fraser was just saying there about going back to the casual finds, which we were talking about this morning, of the, this incredible Roman uh, brooches that he's, he's talking about in Fife. Uh, some of the recent finds, recent casual finds that come into our own collection are also in brooches. Here's two from Bonnytown, north of our area, uh, from 2017. Uh, we get a lot of items coming into our collection uh, as a result of treasure trove, metal detectorists uh, finding these things, finding these found objects, as Fraser said, and we'll always put in a bit. Uh, to find a panel uh, to, for objects found in our area and this we add to the collections in, in our archaeological uh, area for successful. Uh, and the acquisition of many of these things, I should just say, of course, is often granted by the National Fund for Acquisitions uh, and other grant funding bodies for which we're eternally grateful for building up uh, the collections. Now, Fraser talked about the Roman Effort up in our part of the world. Here are two things that popped in only last year two Roman brooches from Bonnytown by uh, Montrose, 2nd century AD, a uh, world shaped brooch. Just the sort of thing that we're, we're excited about. We're only excited about when we get Roman stuff uh, in our part of the world. Uh, and here's two that popped up and are now uh, part of the collections. Uh, one, not too good condition, but you can still see the uh, enamel. Uh, Surviving. And the second fragment uh, was another one. Both of these found were not too far apart, uh, so this might suggest something of, of a new site, uh, intriguingly, suggests another Roman site that might just be around. That's two, and actually the third one, also last year, it's done uh, a little brooch in the Trose. This T shaped brooch cast on a solid piece of copper alloy. Uh, the body, you can see, it's got the uh, Teardrop motif and again blue enamel ring. Uh, I'm very nice to see the Roman uh, material uh, still coming into the museums, following the small numbers. One of the casual finds that we have been acquiring in recent years are rings. Rings seem to pop up regularly. I put this one in. This is not actually a recent find. It's a 1990s one that's uh, 27 grams of gold. 
gold uh, on display in the Met Museum uh, from a stand by Forfer. But rings and gold have a whole collection just of, of rings in our uh, museums. These are some casual finds that have come recently. Uh, I'll we'll say something a bit more about them. Uh, there's a gold ring from Balardo uh, and a very, very fine incision on, on that piece. A spectacular gold ring, plain on the exterior, but you can see it's showing uh, very, very fine signs of engraving. Probably, uh, well, I don't know, we're thinking of, of, of it, of found in uh, 2017. Captain of Colbert in Goldrum, that's inland towards Kiriyur, another fine, fine gold ring with an agate set in a, a, a central heart shaped bezel. And the shoulders of this ring are engraved with a, a shield of uh, cruciform design. Uh, perhaps even uh, this ring might have at uh, one time been enamelled. That's on display in a small museum in Kirimur. Feed rings pop up in casual finds of recent years. We all know about feed rings, perhaps used as wedding rings, that might serve as gifts for crafts hands. These sort of rings coming in the, the later 12th century and continuing use right up into the post-medieval period. Uh, this one from Balhoven, inland Nagus, is still even showing even to this day the traces of gilding uh, and some some lettering. The final one is not something later than the medieval is set. We have there the finger ring from the uh, Again, something that came into the collection of casual find in uh, recent years, 2015, perhaps a little later in date, uh, 17th century uh, posy ring with the, the flower uh, the design. And I'm sorry, the, the, the engraving is not too clear here, but it such as in my affection my affliction in, in the interior. So rings are amazing things that are casual finds of these years. Even more rings. Uh, still finds a ring. It's a signet ring. Oh, right, we'll that. that and back. Yeah. Top. Upper left is a, a bezel, this bezel is the centre part, the hoops missing, a uh, loss of a single ring from Mary Cartman Shows, many ring coming into 2016. Mary, the, the, the mark there is a merchant's mark, who knows, it said that rings like this probably replace seal uh, matrices as the, the means of uh, stamping a wax seal uh, around the time of the, the 16th century. Another feed ring popping in from our, uh, our Berlin, Terry Moore rather, that one there. And another one from from uh, from Berlin again, uh, 14th, 15th century uh, rings. Uh, you can still see tracings of, of the gilding, uh, in both the interior and exterior of, of the rings. Very, very worn, but amazing to see so many rings <coughs> popping up. And as I say, we also have a display just on the rings. One particular splendid example uh, that appears a casual find, metal detectors again, an early medieval. From coming into our uh, collection 2017. Uh, this is, may not look like a ring, it's just the bezel, the hoop's gone, uh, the other parts are gone, but we're left with the, the central bezel portion, splendid medieval uh, lozenge shaped object, probably a ring bezel. Uh, now, I'm not a real expert in medieval rings, but I do know that similar examples have been found elsewhere, uh, including others from other parts of the British Isles. Uh, further south, from other hordes in Iona uh, or in, in Fife. Uh, and it does suggest that it's probably a finger ring. A ring was in early medieval times, uh, between the, you know, the 9th and the 11th centuries. Uh, I do think this is a splendid object to come into a collection. We had to bid for it at no small expense, uh, but we just have it in our collections. And it's astonishing that, that that's an over an 800 year old uh, relic. Rings are commonly of casual finds in recent years. Other things that are also casual finds in recent years are things to do with uh, transportation, if you like. Horse harness pieces, this sort of thing. Uh, harness pearl from Fen, 
fair of an inland and European property world across each object, uh, part of something that's rather functional and that's part of a decorative uh, piece of a horse harness. Uh, this one is actually a rather plain example uh, in design, uh, doesn't have any great heraldic uh, design or anything like that and weigh on it, uh, but it might be part of a, a larger decorative uh, hanger or, or, or a horse uh, bridle piece. Another harness piece from Goldrum, again inland Angus. That's older indeed. I think that's probably Iron Age. Please might come back to me on that one. But there are a few examples of these. I've heard of one or two from other hordes from the borders uh, around the south of Scotland. And on the bottom right, a harness permit from our Burland. Our Burland's on the coast uh, south of our growth. It's a copper alloy piece. And intriguingly, that's got, as you can see, it has the scallop motif on it, which we know, of course, is a simple pilgrimage. Uh, traces of gilding are perhaps even still there, but it's intriguing that it's a coastal site, it's a harvest site, and it's got the scallop uh, motif. If I go away from uh, some of the transportation horse harvest pieces, obviously, casual finds occasionally. Lead, metal, metal tetris, seal, seal matrices uh, are very commonly uh, popping up. There's two in this, in this slide here a uh, seal matrix from Tanagas, uh, 16th century, coming in 2016, maybe uh, mid 16th century. It's got a rounded uh, motif in the centre of, of it, uh, bounded by a, a possible inscription. And the right hand one is. I think rather <coughs> intriguing. Some glands. Uh, glands, of course, has a, a long history of occupation. We still have the Great Grand's Castle there, uh, and the date of that seal, perhaps in the 17th century, uh, could well have been perhaps associated with a, a significant period of the, the castle rebuilding, perhaps a merchant marking, sealing the, the bills of sale, this sort of thing. So it's from Glam's Castle at a time of rebuilding of the castle. One more of a seal, so a recent casual finds, so one from a mythi. Uh, again, these things are relatively larger through metal detectors and coming in through the treasure trove uh, process. Another group of casual finds that I think is worthy of mention of recent years are these uh, uh, lead, lead objects, uh, papal bullas. Appearing as casual finds in Angus, perhaps associated to links with the ancient ecclesiastical centres of Argroth and, and Brechin. Uh, this is one uh, found uh, farmer, which is uh, close to Brechin, uh, possibly dated 14th century. Uh, it's just a fragment of the thing, only three quarters of it is surviving. And uh, the experts amongst us tell us that it's, it's from the Pope who was active in uh, 1303 to 1304, uh, Benedict XII. Uh, and you can see his symbols on the left. Papal bullets, this is, not, this is one of several uh, of a period of recent casual finds. Here's a second one, uh, another one from not too far away from the Trose, uh, a lead bullet of a slightly earlier Pope, uh, Boniface VIII, I understand, 1290. Or that sort of time uh, is cast in lead and shows St. Paul and St. Peter uh, on one face. Now, this particular pillar is perhaps a wee bit uh, odd or uh, unusual. It seems to have been perforated with a, a relatively large central hole. Uh, what's going on there is not very clear. Let's go back to that one. Uh, but it's quite a, an intrusive. Mark to make in a book, paper bullet, perhaps it was being modified into use for some other purpose. Spindle, borel, that sort of thing. Uh, possibly some sort of uh, medieval uh, recycling uh, going on uh, with that one. Third of these set uh, is yet another uh, casual find, yet another casual paper bullet, uh, also in the Matros area. Uh, this one coming uh, from uh, Alexander IV, who was Pope from 1254 
1261. Uh, this one has a neat fracture down the what would have been the centre part of the object, uh, uh, broken down the centre channel that contained probably contained the wires which held it to the document. Other small casual finds. Uh, oops. Castle at Bottom from Glams, Glams uh, Castle we mentioned already from the 18th century. A lead swindle wall uh, from uh, Muirfield uh, coming towards Dundee, there's a stone from Lettering, uh, marked on that one. And the, the final thing in this slide uh, is a spur, a spur fragment uh, from medieval uh, times. Uh, I understand the many old spur fragments were often iron and lost, but this one being copper or copper alloy uh, has survived uh, to this day and popped up in, in the metal detectors. Assemblages uh, also pop up in groups of items uh, rather than single items. Uh, Red Castle, uh, midden by the ancient uh, seat there, uh, bones and uh, teeth. Uh, that sort of thing, and potter's shares, some other alloy uh, mounts, uh, also from the uh, Red Castle Blue Bay area. And moving in land, both of all, uh, again something that comes as a casual find in 2015, uh, a copper uh, alloy dress pin. Uh, this pin has a, a circular head with a series of engraved uh, lines running from the Apex uh, to its end, its perimeter, uh, and that's, uh, that's something that popped up again to a metal detectors. That, uh, I think many of us have recognised as a bronze object, uh, not a complete full bronze age sword, uh, but a central fragment, if you like, uh, of a, a middle section fran fragment of a bronze age sword uh, from Crane by the Shores, uh, found in, in 2016. And the final one on this particular image here is uh, going back to Neolithic times, a uh, polished stone axe head from uh, Kingeni towards Dundee, a small uh, stone axe head worthy of, uh, of being uh, going through the treasure trove process uh, as a, a significant item. Other axe heads have also come in as casual finds. Uh, here's two here, a uh, fragment uh, of a socketed axe head from uh, Meriton, that's not far away from one of the sites we talked about earlier with the, the Bula, uh, the Bronze Age, and you can see that it, it's actually appears to have been fractured uh, long ago in, in antiquity. And the uh, second one, in an unconserved state from Glam's uh, Middle Bronze Age uh, 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 flange axe head uh, found uh, by metal detecting again as many of these objects were. Uh, that one's, I think, in really excellent condition. I see you can jump just like that. Then, <laughs> two small things. Another sort of assemblage, assemblage from uh, non-metallic objects, again, coming as a casual find uh, of uh, lithics uh, from Ordowney, 22 pieces of pink granite. Uh, including some fragments uh, and, and seems set of finished pieces, well, perhaps a set of tools. The object at the top, I'm sure many of you might recognise, I'm not sure I could recognise, it's a terret, uh, another piece of a, a harness fitting. Uh, I think that's the, the, the part where the horse reins pass through. It may be a iron age and it may actually be a rather unfinished object, cast aside. Uh, suggesting there was a workshop uh, producing uh, these uh, items uh, around the Muniki area. Oh, that said, fragments pop back again, and that's a tool from Brecon, uh, possibly a small fragmentary axe head uh, or another Bronte's tool, uh, again, uh, now on display in the Brecon Museum. Some rather more than simple items occasionally take an interest, and I think they're worth the information, is uh, a group of assemblages from 
two parts of a coastal area. Uh, one is East Haven, uh, East Haven on the coast, uh, uh, popping up uh, an immense amount of medieval uh, forms, uh, buckles, oops, buckles, saw fittings, even more rings and knife pommels. Uh, these have been the end parts of knives, suggesting a lot of trade, a lot of medieval marketing going on, uh, perhaps in East Haven. A really rich, uh, rich uh, area. Uh, I should just say East Haven is down in the parish of Pan Bright here. The other ones we've talked about were Cathy Craig uh, and then Land. The Pan Bright is this assemblage here that we've just seen the slide on, and we've also recently been seeing a number of other uh, assemblages up in the parish of Craig. This is not an assemblage when inland uh, casual finds. This is something that went in 2016 2015. Uh, nine separate finders, large coin board from the uh, 13th century, mostly out of the first coinage, uh, 47 coins from uh, pennies from the, the Mints and Berry, Bury St. Edmunds, Canterbury, Durham, the list goes on from uh, these mints. There's one uh, coin of Scots origin there, uh, John Bailey old penny. There. That's on display in the Kirin Museum. I would urge anybody to see any of our more recent finds. It's, it's a very small museum in Kirin Muir, but we've got a number of them on display.